Oh boy, how are we folks? Back once again, it is the Josh Potter Show and we're inside this new spot working out some more kinks. I'm going to get this sign hung up here. We got plants now. I mean, this is, <laughs> we are on the rise folks and I hope you come out on the road uh, coming up here very, very shortly. I don't know how math works, but the 2nd and 3rd of February, Las Vegas wise guys, get tickets, please go to at Josh underscore Potter on Instagram at J underscore Potter on Twitter. And you can find all the links there for tickets coming up in May. I'm going to be in Washington, D.C. We have Huntsville, Alabama, Nashville. All these things are about to go on sale. So keep your eyes peeled and make sure you keep going to the Patreon, patreon.com slash the Josh Potter show, twitch.tv slash Josh underscore Potter. And our guest today, she has a Twitch and a podcast and all kinds of fun stuff it's natalie cuomo folks hey. hooray how are you hi thanks for having me josh thank you so much for coming please plug everything and anything oh okay yes all i have things. a i have a podcast called help with natalie cuomo where mm -hmm. i ask people for advice and uh i'm on the road you can see my dates at nataliecuomo.com and i've got a special on youtube it's called shut up you loved it awesome i love that by the way the name of that special was that the name of a tour at one point too it wasn't. It's actually a tattoo I have. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Shut up. You loved it. That sounds like something a, a girl would say when it's like something scary is about to happen, but it's going to be fun. Yes. Yes. <laughs> the tattoo is like it's on a gravestone. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's pretty wild. You have many a tattoo. I'm not one to ask about tattoos. People, I feel like, don't like it. It's a mix. It depends who's asking. Oh, okay. I see. Yeah. And sometimes people bring them up and I'm like, I didn't ask. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Do you have any? I don't have any because I don't think I'm that decisive. Yeah. It's like commitment thing. And I'm not like anti-commitment by right. any means, but it's like one of these things where it's like, if I got a tattoo, what would I not hate in like a couple of years? I yeah. think about that. But do you, can, can you get like frivolous with it where you just go, I'm just going to get a whole bunch of them so that like, yeah, I'll probably hate one, but. Who cares? I've got like 20 others. I'm actually very indecisive in every other area of my life. It's fun to just not give a fuck about something that matters so much. Yeah, that's true. That is kind of freeing at the end of the day. Which is your most like frivolous tattoo? I got a, a wolf wearing pajamas. A what? A wolf wearing pajamas. A wolf wearing pajamas. I was like, what the hell is that? <laughs> I thought you said something else, but I... What do you uh, think I said? I don't even know. I didn't even know what that first word was, but you said wolf. <laughs> I thought it was like a wolf, a wolf where... I don't, I don't know what the fuck she thought, I thought she said. But do you have any tattoos that you like forgot that you got? Where you're like, oh, yeah. <laughs> you like come across. Yeah, yeah, definitely. <laughs> I've got like some wheat. Wheat? Yeah. I, just have <laughs> <laughs> I like that. It's like part of the food pyramid. You're just getting all the... <laughs> yeah. I have some grains. <laughs> <laughs> you're just like i think i have that somewhere and now um you're on the road like you mentioned and i think it's kind of cool you go on the road with your fiance yes that's awesome yeah it's fun and a lot of comics like hate dating comics and stuff like that they're like don't date a comic i've done it once it didn't go great <laughs> uh but uh i still am not against it do you know what i mean so many yeah. people are against it and i feel like i don't know there's been times where I'm like, I feel like we're we have something going on here. And then they're like, no, I just can't date comics. There was a girl who was like, what if we like date and then it, it doesn't go well and we have to see each other everywhere? I go, we don't see each other anywhere. Yeah. We are never on the same shows. <laughs> I, I think I've met you. One, I didn't even know you were a comic for the longest time. <laughs> Yeah, I feel that for sure. I mean, I dated a comic and it didn't work out. And after that, I was like, oh, my God, I don't want to date a comic again. But then I kind of realized, like, it, like the feelings that you have associated with that just go away over time. Like, you're mm -hmm. not always going to feel that way. And yeah. then, like, you know, obviously it's the same with any coworker, but hopefully. Or just, like, person that you date in a friend yeah, circle exactly. or something. like. You're going to have proximity to anybody you date. I feel like people get so used to like now with the apps or whatever. They're like, well, I can just get rid of this person out of my right. life and never have contact with them again. But if you live in like a small town or something, you still run into the people that go to the bar or whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. back home in Buffalo, if you date a girl, chances are, you know, someone else she slept with or someone, you know, knows someone she slept with like hands down easily. Is that how it is in Iowa, Kirsten? Oh, yeah. I'm from a town of like 800 people. So you just, you know, like everything, even when you don't want to. You, yeah. So like if you fuck a guy, <laughs> you know, he fucked like your friends. Yeah. Or they oh, know sure. they're like, oh, he fucked Melissa. 
Yeah, you probably know people in their family who they have fucked too, which is like what's really wild. Oh my God, I could not deal. I find it to be so unattractive. Like if someone's fucked one of my friends, that's the biggest. Like Really? <laughs> well, you don't have that happen probably. You're from Brooklyn, right? So it's bigger. From Queens. Queens, my bad, yes. Yeah. So that's huge. Yeah, and I don't have that many friends, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so if they fuck one of your friends, that's like a real. It's really a like, move. That's feels like intentional. A thing. Yeah. That's, yeah, exactly. They'd have to really, like, find them and fuck them. Yeah. That's crazy. Has that ever happened? <sighs> they found him and fucked him. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually, it, it hasn't. It okay, hasn't that's happened. good. That's yeah, good. Yeah, thankfully. Yeah, so I just thought that was cool, and I was like, how come more comics don't do that? You know what? It is cool. It's fun. I, honestly, I didn't. Fe- we didn't, like, try to date. I think that's why. Because, mm. like, we were friends for a while. Sure. And I was definitely like, I'm never going to date a comic again. And then we just like, we're good friends. And it worked out. It's actually a fun story because I was like doing my special and the girl that was supposed to host it canceled the day of. And oh, I was wow. like, so upset. And I was venting to Dan. I was like, I'm so upset. And he's like, I'm so sorry. Like, what can I do? And I was like, you can host it for me. <laughs> <laughs> and then like we hooked up that night. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, lucky you got a gig and he got the hook. Up. I know. <laughs> I mean, hell. <laughs> Need an agent like that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Natalie, I thought we could talk about, I think you're like a fast food connoisseur, right? Yes. You love fat. What's your favorites? Culver. Rank them right now. Okay. So I like Culver's a lot. What the hell's mm. Culver's? What? <laughs> you're going to learn about me that I don't know anything about fast food. Are you food. okay? <laughs> I don't <laughs> I don't know what Culver's is. Oh, no. I've made her despondent. <laughs> Do you know what Culver's is? Yes. I'll be honest. I don't think I've ever ate there, but I definitely know what it is. It's um, it's actually so good. Like, it's only really in, like, Florida. Oh. And Illinois. certain states. It's deeply Midwestern in Wisconsin. I but, feel like it's, like, like you, see, you definitely country. see it. It's so good. The fried chicken sandwiches. They have fried cheese curds. It's actually the happiest fast food available. Man, I've literally never. What was the other one I never heard of either? Jollibee? Have you heard yeah, of one of those? That's a weird yeah, that's one, That's not good. That's, that's like, not good? you're okay. getting, like gravy and spaghetti gravy fast food and spaghetti, spaghetti which is just like an odd people choice. will get jolly bee and they'll get it for like i got it for everyone and they'll put it on the Ew. table and you're like oh god <laughs> no yuck don't bring your cursed jolly bee over here <laughs> so culver's is number one give me your mount rushmore that's okay. like four right culver's i will say burger king just for burger their king. french toast sticks wow that might not even be there anymore <laughs> but burger king's on your mouth that's like uh some people would say that is blasphemy yeah but the thing is they had they had when i was when i was a wee lad mm-hmm. they had french toast sticks and uh, that was really special. On special days, my mom my mom would drive me to school instead of my dad, and we would get the French toast sticks at Burger King, and that was really nice. On a special day? Yeah. I was gonna. I was wondering if it was like attached to trauma. No, no, no. Sticks. It was like, oh, mom's <laughs> taking me instead of dad. We can stop oh, okay. and get French toast sticks. It's not like mom and dad had another fight, and we have to leave the house, so we went and no. got French toast sticks. <laughs> I will say the bottom, my least favorite. I infamously mm. hate. She's going to the bottom now. Wendy's. Wow, <laughs> yeah. that's a shot to my heart because here's the thing: I don't venture very much in the fast food. It's not like I'm like a dietary master or anything don't like that. I go just here for me. I just don't. But here's what you want to know: my favorite item, fast food item, Wendy's chili. Oh. God. Wendy's chili fucks, folks. <laughs> At it least you didn't say their, the say their chicken sandwich with that disgusting sauce on it that makes it, it has like a curdle in your mouth. Which sauce? I've never even heard of this thing. Their Wendy's chicken sandwich makes me sick to my stomach. The I actually, spicy chicken? Oh my God, she's gagging. <laughs> I, I have an emote in my Discord that says no Wendy's. Really? I hate Wendy. I have a video on my YouTube. No Wendy's allowed. This is the, this is the sandwich that makes it's, you gag. It doesn't even look right. It Why doesn't. Does that that, that bun look, looks like Play Doh. Yeah, that doesn't look like. It's a, not a right. Oh. Well, the Wendy's chili, as the kids say, slaps, and I love it. Wow. And, but what it is, you see, and this is a thing about working. I worked in fast food for a minute. Really? And uh, what they do in Wendy's is when the burger gets like messed up because you know they have the squares. That baby turns into chili meat. Can you Google? I didn't have this in the prep. YouTube the uh, Wendy's training video about the chili. 
because there's a rap song that they t- that they tell you in the <laughs> no. training video. It's like a rap. Yeah, it says that baby turns into chili meat. This just isn't right that you like Wendy's. It's not that I like Wendy's. I like the chili and I like the training videos. Do you ever see the the old country buffet training video where the guy's like, where do you go to school? It's right there. Yeah, it's right there. Yeah, no, I guy. haven't. I have not. Let's see if we can find this rap song. It's, oh God, it's so wow. good. I played it for years on the radio and I don't remember at all. Where what do you I mean you played it. it for years on the radio? We found it on the radio and I just kept playing it. Oh, right there. Oh my God, is that this it? This one? Grill yes. skills. Play that grill skills. A, hold on, let me let me skim here. Do you think Just bop it around for a second. This is the oh, one. There this they is are. the one. What's next? Let me see. I've salted, turn, press. Oh, right there. I sold cheese. Mm-hmm. Yep. Thinking. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Drain and serve. <laughs> yeah, this is gross. How am I draining it? <laughs> Get ready. Just drain. What are you draining it of? The grease. Here it comes. That's my. That's the hook right there. That, that baby, baby turns, turns into, into chili meat. Chili meat, and then that's where I go. Nom 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 nom. I eat it up. He's doing that too. Yeah. That guy in the cold. He's like. He was like. Mom, 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 mom. Yes, indeed. Wonderful song. I don't know why it harkened back that memory, but it sure did. I like the song. You like the song. You don't like the the establishment, though. That's your worst one, but you didn't finish your top four. Okay, I will. Okay. I used to like to go to McDonald's. I'd get a happy meal, hold the meal. I want the toy. Just the toy. (laughs) My mom used to go in there and just get the toys. She'd figure that out. Yeah. She was a hoarder. I but I like <laughs> I like the fries. Okay. I like the fries. I like the snack wraps. So that's your third one. The snack wraps are coming back, by the way. Yeah. And your fourth, if you had to get one. So Uh oh. This is controversial. really controversial for my life. Okay. I'm gonna go with Taco Bell. Why is that controversial? I recently had uh I recently you know, I, I got pulled over coming out of a Taco Bell and it, it led to a difficult situation. What? Was there a gun in your quesadilla? <laughs> <laughs> what happened? Are you, can you talk about it or is it like... Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What happened? Um, well, this is actually a great story. Okay, please share it. <laughs> condensed version. This is my favorite part about podcasts is finding the great stories. Well, condensed version okay. would be... I like the potato tacos, by the way. Okay. But... um. <laughs> we did a we did a gig yeah and uh you know we're leaving the gig in the, the where is this in the world fort wayne indiana okay the manager said at the end of the weekend you know this has been amazing i i have to let you guys know it's my last day here i got a better offer at taco bell <laughs> so the the comedy club in fort wayne indiana not paying their manager better than taco bell that's what we know so we so we're driving home i said we got to go. We got to go to Taco Bell. Me and okay. Dan go to Taco Bell. And um, yeah, I we got we got pulled over um, when we were leaving the Taco Bell parking lot, which led to a whole series of events. What could you have gotten? What did you get pulled over for? Just they were like up. Oh. Beep, weep, uh, oh, he weep. had it. He didn't turn. So he turned his light off while we were eating it in the in the lot. Oh, so he like he didn't turn it on the second that we. I see. And there was perhaps a smell associated with the car. Mm. And it wasn't Taco Bell. It wasn't Taco. Mm-hmm. Bell. It wasn't farts from Taco Bell. It wasn't. <laughs> I'm assuming it's just a marijuana situation. We and can it, talk about it. Was it. At, yeah, but it this was, is legal. It wound up being fine. We're legal here in California. It wound up being fine. I will say it was my first time sitting in the back of a cop car. Wow. But you know what? He let you eat the Taco Bell, though. I had already (laughs) finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had already finished. Uh, Wound up, everything's fine. Um, But yeah, Taco Bell, it's still in my, it's in my top. I do like the potato tacos. I don't know if I could eat there again. You just have PTSD attached to. The PTSD I have is is pretty intense. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, because you forget, like, I mean, it's been a minute since I was like, worried about cops bothering me over weed do you know what i mean like you would think but then if you're driving in a state like indiana where you don't know any better it wasn't indiana it was on the it was another state oh you were leaving that yeah 
I see, I see. One of the illegal states, which, by the way, folks, I don't know which ones they are anymore. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't tell you. Yeah. But uh, I go out there like a coy dog. I got, you know, I'm outside these venues just ripping weed. And then someone will tell me, hey, that's not legal here. And I'll be like, oh, yeah. But like, I mean, growing up in New York State, I didn't give a shit about it being illegal. I was smoking weed in my car. I was smoking weed walking around. I didn't care. The thing is that it made me realize like America is not one country. No. Yeah. It's different places. It's you go someplace and the weed is actually, treated like you're in Iraq or something. It's crazy. It's, it's the same as cocaine in a lot of states. That's crazy. Which is fucking nuts. Because here you just go. I mean, I could a co- here in at Burbank, California. If I'm smoking outside and someone's like, is that a cigarette? I'd be like, yes. They'd be like, that's illegal. If it was weed, they'd be like, carry on. <laughs> yeah. It's crazy. That's so, nuts. So I do like the potato tacos. Okay. But you are going to have a hard time. I don't know if I'll Keeping return. your anxiety down in I a don't, Taco Bell I taco. don't know if I'll return. Because you. this is not like an insult by any stretch, but you give Taco Bell. <laughs> like your whole vibe. It's like. <laughs> I feel like they should give you for a commercial because you're like your gamer girl. You like tattoos. I, I auditioned for a Taco Bell commercial and uh, I didn't get it. I don't know if you because you just gasped. I don't know if that was like a why thank you or if it was like how dare you. <laughs> I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm surprised because I was never a, a Taco Bell uh, person until I was introduced to the potato taco. Um, I, now you just have to get it on DoorDash so you don't have that. I can't go there again. I mean, yeah. this was really atrocious, this I situation. It was the most traumatizing yeah. fast food situation I've ever been in in my life. That'll do it. I mean, who knew if I hadn't, if I hadn't said, let's get Taco Bell, wouldn't have had that night. However, <laughs> this is what I'll say. I don't know. I did audition for a Taco Bell commercial, and I would. I'm always typecast as the makeup artist with no lines. Hmm. I for w- a Taco Bell commercial, there's a makeup artist in the cast. Yes. Taco Bell, I would. And change your marketing strategy. What's a makeup artist doing in the thing? Looking at the tacos, going. <laughs> oh. <okay. laughs> and like this. Wow. Yeah. And you play a makeup artist, so there's like a celebrity who's like, "I got everyone Taco Bell." And the yes. makeup artist is like, I can't wait. A <laughs> makeup artist has no lines. She's just ad living. That's a strange thing to do. What is it like? You're watching the Disney Channel. Oh, that would be even funner. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by the fine folks at Rocket Money. Oh boy, you think you uh, you've got your life together? I I certainly never would venture to guess that I do. Uh, but if you out there you think you have your life together, you're probably paying for tons of subscriptions you didn't even use or you forgot you even had. I mean, I'll tell you, I went on this thing and it was telling me that I'm paying for apps that I don't even know what the apps do, let alone that I downloaded them or why would I have downloaded them? Maybe I was in the middle of the night. I have no idea. But I realized once I got Rocket Money that, uh, boy, oh boy, I've just got money going out the window on things that I don't even know what they do. So Rocket Money is your personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps lower your bills. It's so easy. The app shows you all the subscriptions you've been paying for, and then you can just cancel the ones you're not using. Just a tap of the button. That's all it is. And Rocket Money will even try to get you a refund for the last couple of months of wasted money, and it'll negotiate to lower your bills by up to 20% if you're looking to save some uh, change this year. So get Rocket Money right now. It's your answer. Rocket Money has over 5 million users and it's helped save its members an average of $720 a year. That's pretty crazy. With over $500 million in canceled subscriptions, stop wasting money on things you don't use. Cancel your unwanted subscriptions by going to rocketmoney.com slash potter. That's rocketmoney.com slash potter, rocketmoney.com slash potter. Well, guess what? Okay. We have some other instances of crime happening in fast food places. Maybe this will make you feel better about it. Maybe it'll quell your anxiety <sighs> about I'm not alone. things. Let's see here. Let's get to the news. And I save this for Kirsten being here because we, you know, Kirsten loves her fast food crime. And I thought that, that we'd, ha- we'd have some good ones here. And I think these have videos. The first one, the headline, this is from Bill M. And Josh Potter Show at gmail.com is where you can send in things, folks. So pleased to be sending oh, things wow. in. 
Uh, this says McDonald's crack pipe, a McDonald's restaurant in Columbus, Ohio, was ordered to close over food safety violations after a customer said he found a crack pipe nestled along his breakfast order. A Reddit user posted on Tuesday that he'd found a glass crack pipe in a bag of a fast food breakfast he ordered and he'd collected from the drive through at one of the chain's locations near Columbus. The Reddit user said in the comments on the platform that he had informed the restaurant's manager, McDonald's corporate team, and the Columbus Division Police of his discovery, and he said that he tried to give uh, the bag to the manager, but he didn't want to take it back. So he was like... Hey, I uh, I found this crack pipe in here. Do you want it back? He actually tried to give it back to the manager. Do you want this back? And the manager's like, I don't want your fucking crack pipe. Get it out of here. So it's like uh, someone in the back is going like, <laughs> shit. How did he get it in there? I mean. It fell out somewhere and he fell it into the just the, one of those whoopsie daisies, you know? Can I ask you a question, though? I mean, sure. like, don't you feel like maybe the customer put the crack pipe? pipe in there and then was like i found it i need my free mcdonald's and my business insider article <laughs> it is actually a pretty genius move to hide some evidence and be like i found my crack i mean the crack pipe in my mcdonald's he wants free mcdonald's for life i mean i'll be honest that's and a good idea i don't care i'm i'm fine with saying this mm-hmm. ohio is my uh, this is where i would expect this to happen yes ohio or Oftentimes, Florida, I would Florida, I could see that. Pipe. Tampa, perhaps. More meth, I would say. Meth. Do they do meth? Uh, I do? actually was walking in LA a day ago and I saw a guy with a crack pipe. Ooh, that'll handy happen. Handy dandy right next to me. He was just on the road? He was sitting there actually uh, across from, you know, Stout Burgers. Okay. Uh, enjoying some crack. Where's that? In West Hollywood? Yeah. Oh, so he's just a man in West Hollywood out in WeHo doing a little crack. Cracky. That's pretty nice. So you think that perhaps the man got it. Bless Bless you. you. So the man, bless you again. The man sent Uh. Business Insider, as you mentioned, photos of the item and his receipt, which included a steak, egg and cheese bagel, two hash browns, two holiday pies, an egg McMuffin and a holiday orange pie. Juice. I mean, that's that's this is a guy that wants he needs it for life. I mean, two holiday pies. If you're getting a holiday pie at McDonald's, you there's it's not right. Did he put the picture of the receipt in there so he could prove he's like, see, didn't order crack pipe. <laughs> crack pipe was not on the receipt. I don't like I don't <laughs> understand how that would actually slip in there. I mean, I could also we've had instances where We've read articles about cocaine falling in, things like that. Kirsten, what do your expertise there, say about the crack pipe situation? Is Natalie on to something? Um, I mean, definitely could be. I will say if someone, I mean, working at a McDonald's, you might need to smoke crack, so that can match up. This could look like a rogue French fry to someone with not the best eye. <laughs> they um, just grabbed a handful. Yeah, they're like, that one's a little burnt, but they'll eat it. But it also <laughs> says down here that... uh. The health and or the public health inspector came, and there was just like heavy construction going on without any uh, safety stuff put up. So I mean, a construction <laughs> worker could also been like, I don't need this pipe anymore. Or I mean, hell, that could have been the least of your worries. Getting a crack pipe in your order. I mean, the, the guy could have got screws. a fucking screw. Yeah, exactly. Could have found a nail, some sawdust. I mean, you're lucky you got a crack pipe. <laughs> Consider it a bonus. But yeah, I could, uh, that could have been mistaken for a rogue fry. Could have uh, chipped a few teeth on there, thinking it was a burnt-ass rogue fry. But I like Natalie's theory, too. Mm-hmm. I think the man wants a Business Insider article. Clout chaser. Yeah. They're everywhere. And he's trying to get rid of his, you know, his crack pipe. He's trying to keep it away from them. We have another McDonald's story that Jonathan Morell sent in. This one's got a video attached to it. This is in North Carolina. A North Carolina pastor was arrested after allegedly attacking a McDonald's cook who works with his wife. This is wrought with drama. I love drama. I love it. Let's see the video once you can find it there. Tell me, you know, Ooh, oh my God, let me see him. Uh, is that the guy? I don't know if there is a video. For that him. is a real frown. <laughs> Whatever, whoever he is, can you do a frown? Can he do a can frown? Can you do a real frown like this? Like make your, like literally like a smile. Like, Am I doing it? It's really tough. That is hard. I can't do it. He's frowning. I guess that's like kind of a virtue for me. I can't fr- I'm incapable of frowning. Do you know what like your mugshot expression will be like if you ever get arrested? I have a mugshot, but I don't know what it looks. I've never actually seen it. What is it And I don't for? even know that you can Google it. I got a DUI in my Oh, youth. really? How yes. long ago? 
Oh, in That's 2009. Kind of... So that would be about 15 years or so. Bless you, bless <laughs> so you. sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I feel like I... Are you allergic to the Roach Motel, perhaps? No, I, I warned you about the sniffles. No, I know you did. I was just joking. Was there a video, like Kirsten, or is it... No, 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 I don't think there's a video. On oh, for this man. One either. I don't think there's any Damn evidence. it. I thought there was uh, evidence of this. But so the High Point Police Department said that this woman called Dwayne Wadden or Waden or whatever this gentleman's name, the man we saw here in the picture on Thursday and told wow. him employees were disrespecting her while she was training. So this is the the man's wife. So this man, according to the article, wasn't loving it. Get it from the McDonald's <laughs> pun? LOL, LOL. So police said she uh, he showed up to the restaurant. This is a pastor, mind you. He walked around the counter put his hands around the neck of one of the woman's co-workers. Then he started punching the victim in the face multiple times, pushing his head down toward one of the deep fryers. He was going to deep fry the man's head. His that's, head. That's insane. <laughs> that's, that's really not good. <laughs> Has anyone's head ever been deep fried before? I mean, that would be fucking nuts. That's like saw. Death by deep fry. They should. Oh, that's the pastor that's, there. That's the pastor here. Who was the guy? So the other guy was the, the guy other, getting his head deep fried. No, that was just like another article that was popping. Up. Pastors oh. kind of have it nice because, you know, they're affiliated with the church, but they still get laid. That's true. They and don't they have to be heads. celibate. And this guy. Yeah, that's the thing. This guy looks like a guy that he's just like, I'm all about the Lord. And then he's like, I will deep fry your fucking head, though. <laughs> the turtleneck the is pretty intense. He looks like he wants to send you to the Lord. Not talking Yeah, about exactly. Him. No, Honestly, I, he would protect you. Have you ever worked a deep fryer? No, I have not. Have you? I have definitely. And it was like, uh, it was weird You when you clean them. You have to like pump the grease through and it's almost like you use the grease to clean the fryers. It like hoses them off. And every now and then, obviously, you change the grease after like however many days or whatever. But then you like, you know, you're using it to like hose it down and it would pop. And I used to wear shorts and it would like singe my leg hairs. So I just have like bald spots on my legs from where the deep fryers would like pop onto my legs. That's That's cheaper than laser. It was. It was like it actually. But it was like. I'd have little like holes on Ooh. my legs, like it was crazy. And then if you wore pants, you'd get them singed. But I never, I never had the balls to put anything in there other than we deep fry all kinds of food. Turducken. You know? Yeah, we would just put whatever was there. We'd be like, oh, let's see what happens when we put that in there. And be like, Grrr. it's fun. I would never want to do it to a human's head. That's though. crazy. Not at least not when it was alive. Maybe if we were eating some head. <laughs> Do you think that was like kind of an impulse move though? Like say you're like in the kitchen, you're fighting with someone, you're like, I don't know, I don't have any weapons, I'll just put their head in the deep fryer. Yeah, that was always like my fantasy, like if a robber came and I had to like fight him, I would like throw the <laughs> grease on him or something and then like yeah. home alone him, you know what I mean? Yeah. But putting his face in there, that is intense. That's like a Saw movie. I'm think. always thinking of new ways to protect myself. Yeah. As a woman, I'd imagine that is like something you have to do all the time is just be like, what can I use here to protect me? Yeah, kitchen knives, tables. Mm, tables? Yes. What do you do with the table? Pick it up and throw it? Yeah, underneath it. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. I mean, I remember I was, what, 12 when Columbine happened? And ever since Columbine, after that, I would go to a classroom and I'd be like, okay, where can I hide or escape? Yeah. And that was, I was early. Now they do drills and shit for these pussies out there in the, <laughs> in the schools where they're having one every other day. It's crazy. Ours was just one. It was like Columbine. That's it. <laughs> so let's see. He started put pushing the uh, or started punching the victim, pushing his face down into the thing. And apparently, the other employees had to pull the man off the 34 year old victim who had a family member drive him to the hospital. The police report said he suffered a large contusion on his forehead and right eye, as well as scratches on his neck. Authorities watched the restaurant's security video and arrested the man on charges of assault and battery. He posted a $1,000 bond. That seems like a low-level bond for a guy who tried to commit murder by friar. According to his social media, he is a truck driver as well as a pastor at Elevated Life International Ministries. Hmm. Mm. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, I, uh, interesting. Is there any? Did you Google any more instances of heads being put into fryers? Because no, you know what else was gross. This is morbid. But when you change the grease, you have to put it out in this giant vat outside by the dumpster, and you know it's grease, so it's like gets hard and gets like 
you know, some truck comes and picks it up or whatever. But if you ever left the lid even slightly open, every now and then you'd go back in there and put the grease in and there would be like a bird or like a squirrel. Why? Because they would smell it and be like, that smells good. Oh, no. And then they'd go in it and then they couldn't get out and they would die. They get stuck. And then they'd be like <sighs> part of it. They're like hardened in there. Oh, it my would God. Be the grossest shit. You come across and you'd be like, Fuck. Gary forgot to put the fucking lid on the grease and there's a raccoon in there now. Gary's a fucking murderer. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Have you ever like shot an animal? No. Really? Never. You know, there's like a thing where like some people do like if you you're supposed to cover yourself in the blood of the first animal you shoot. I mean, what Native American told you that? <laughs> no, it's like a real thing. Okay. In, wait, I don't, in what culture? <laughs> in like lots of cultures. Is it, Kirsten? I You're mean, just not I mean, I know people in from my hometown who like are really big into deer hunting. And one of their things is you have to like drink a little bit of the blood after you kill the deer. All right. I, I never my did. Friend, it's just what I've heard. My friend growing up, she did that. She, she, uh. She wore the blood all day, and then she po- all day she posed <laughs> yeah. with she po- she dressed the deer up as uh, Rudolph and she took photos with it. It was a little fucked up. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I don't think the people from my hometown are doing all that. But so when you say wear the blood, was she like putting it on like a linebacker? Or was it like a full red face? I wasn't. I I actually did. I don't know. She just came back. She told me she felt very spiritually aligned with the deer. Wow. Which isn't didn't feel like. I mean, that's wrong. Like I understand you want to use every part of the deer, but that's not really using it. No, that's more like wearing every part of the deer. You're like, I don't know. I want its jizz too. I'm gonna. But then, oh, you know what else? I saw it in an Anthony Bourdain episode as well. Oh, he well, he's doing all kinds of cock. No, but I really, there really he's is like, uh, you know, some. Ghost came to me in a ayahuasca trip and told me to wear the the blood of the deer. I can't even smush Look, a bug you, on my wall because I don't want its guts on my wall. A blood, uh, bugs are ugly. Yeah, bugs, yeah, yeah. Bugs are ugly. They are. They really are. <laughs> I know, but I don't want. I hate when I kill a bug. I have to do an autopsy, basically, or commit. A, I have to put a murder scene on my wall. Then no, all that's, of a sudden, uh, it's, it's not right. I can't handle it. I can't handle it. It's like I want to just scoop it up or go outside, or I'll euthanize it. So that it stays intact and then I can remove its course. You know what I'm saying? Like I spray it, I poison it with some toxins and then it dies and then I can remove its body. The poisoning is my favorite as well. Yeah, because I don't want to smush it. I don't want to feel its thorax and I don't want its guts on my wall. When you're, Even honest, if it's tiny. And if it's you're a in a bad smoosh. mood, do you like to smush? No. That's no. There's no mood that would make me want to smush. <laughs> can I tell you something so crazy? What's that? Okay, when I was like in high school, I like dated this guy. He was crazy. He lived in Bushwick. He was older than me. And he had he had chickens in his backyard and his neighbor came over and killed them. And they made chicken soup. And I was a vegetarian at the time. I didn't partake. Wait, did he kill him at the blessing of your boyfriend? Yeah, the neighbor came over, stepped on the wings, sl- oh slit the God. necks, and you they saw this? Yes. <sighs> and they 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 defeathered them, and they the chickens were tiny. the The issue was you can't have either a rooster or a hen. I don't remember which one in in New York. So they uh, they they had to kill a few because to, they defeathered them. They made chick. It was so crazy. That's wild to watch the process. But it was not right because it was like in Brooklyn. You know? Yeah, that seems weird. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> like it just like, wasn't okay. <laughs> they shanked the chicken. That's how they killed it. They just hit it with a chain, a chain wallet, and then knocked it out and then clipped. Yeah, that's. I will wild. say the neighbor was she was barefoot on was the wings. Woman. She was barefoot on the wings. She stepped on it and she slit the neck. It was pretty. She knew what she was doing. Now did the. Did the boyfriend of yours say, hey, neighbor, you you know how to kill a fucking chicken. Why don't you come on over? Or was she just like, you can't have these. I'm going to need to do something about it. It was more of the first one. OK, <laughs> I see. So he was like, I have these chickens. I'm not allowed to have them. I'm going to call up Sally. She knows what to do. And then she'd snap their necks and everything. It was a traumatizing day for sure. Yeah. Is they- that what made you were a vegetarian at the time? Yes. That brought you back to meat. You were like, No, no, no. I did not. I've been, I stayed. I stayed. 
Oh, okay. I You're stayed. still a vegetarian? No, the pandemic brought me back to meat. Oh, interesting. Yeah. What, what an interesting... Are you happy that it did? or is I, it... I still try to like not eat meat, but still kind of have that, you know. Today's Josh Potter show is brought to us by Game Time. Stop spending a ton of money on your event tickets and finding a cement beam blocking your view on the day of the event. That's the worst. When you buy tickets on some of these sites, you can't tell where the hell they are. You've never been to the venue before. Then you sit down and there's a beam in your way or maybe there's an overhang where you're like, oh, cool. I can't even see the outfield right now. Well, guess what? Game time has like a 360 view for every seat that you purchase, no matter what the venue is, especially if you haven't been there before. It comes in handy. So the next time you're looking to get big concerts, sports games or comedy show tickets, get your tickets with game time with killer last minute deals, all in prices, views from your seat and their best price guarantee which i'll tell you about in a little bit game time takes all the guesswork out of ticket buying knowing what your view of the stage will look like helps you pick out the exact seats you want and their game time guarantee is absolutely crazy if you find tickets from another site in the same section in row for less game time is going to credit you 110 percent of the difference that's unbelievable so i mean i would even just start looking i'll be like is it cheaper but you're not going to find anything cheaper i promise you right now and i love going to baseball games and sometimes you go to a new stadium you have no idea the layout you don't know where you're sitting what section means what the whole thing about being able to see the 360 view of where you sit comes in handy quite a bit. So Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of the event and even an hour after it begins. So you never have to plan your life months in advance. If something sounds like fun, you can just snag the ticket and go right then. So take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code POTTER for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account, redeem code POTTER for $20 off. Download the Game Time app today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. We were having this topic of conversation last week on the program. Did you see the mascot of the Pop Tart die and become food? Would you eat a Pop Tart if it was sentient? What? What? If a pop if a Pop Tart was sentient, see if you can find the video again. It's in last week's prep. If a Pop Tart was sentient. It had a face. A pop tart's not worth a thousand calories. <laughs> <laughs> but would you eat it if it was? So you're saying you just wouldn't eat one in general. But would this fall under vegetarian or vegan? Like going against it because normally, obviously, you'd be able to. But because say it's, it's a like mascot? it's dancing, it's alive. Then it goes down into the thing. Keep it playing. It's not cute. It's obviously a man. So I think it's cute. No compassion for it. You don't think it's cute? Even because it's a boy Pop Tart. So he's in the toaster and then all of a sudden he comes out here. Ka ching. Where is he's he? He's ready. I just don't see him. Get ready. Here he comes. Where is he? Now he's out. <gasps> what happened to him? He got cooked. No. <laughs> yeah, he's cooked. Now they're going to eat his face. <laughs> he doesn't even look tasty at all. Wait. Mm. <gasps> yeah, isn't that fucked? No, he doesn't even look remotely tasty. And the people eating him, they don't even look like they're, they don't care. They look like nice guys. He just won the Pop-Tart Bowl, that man. Anyhow, so I just was, I'm, this is like he a was moral quandary. He was cute when he was quandary. dancing. He I was thought cute so, he was yeah. Dancing. And All then right. he got cooked. Now I'm just saying, because he is a living thing with a face. Are vegetarians allowed to eat that Pop-Tart? The answer, the short answer would be no. That's half your calories for the day. And that's just a waste. That's really a waste. They, they are, uh, it's not right. The, There's a cinnamon toast crunch with a cute. face. He's cute. I like him. <laughs> I love when things are cute. It really gets me going. Yeah, but will it make you not eat that then? <laughs> it depends how cute. I love when it's cute. <laughs> it's so cute. That's, I like how you found more sentient breakfast meals, Kirsten. Thank well, you. These ones eat each other, so I think it's okay. Ew. Yeah. Cannibalism from the cinnamon. They are office. really cute. <laughs> I love when things are cute. They are sending Natalie the cinnamon toast crunches. <laughs> I love little smiles and eyeballs. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. Oh, yeah. That one is cute. For that sure. one's That's nice. It's got one. little tiny feeties. <laughs> it's got cinnamon toast cutie. <laughs> Uh. Let's get back to the depravity. <laughs> no. <laughs> I'm having acuteness overload here. You know, I had another uh, thing here. What were you going to say? I'm sorry. Go ahead. Uh, <laughs> you don't remember? It's scary. What's scary? The world? Yes. <laughs> no, I agree. <laughs> 
<laughs> I agree. So I'm, I'm glad we got to give you a dosage of cute cinnamon little, toast crunches. Need a little more cute. Leave the cinnamon toast crunch up there for a while. We talk about the this thing, uh, a strange prank. You want to hear about a prank? Pranks are fun. I don't like pranks either. <laughs> All right, I, I'll hear about it. But look, <laughs> I don't like the mad guy. I like the happy one. Yeah, the one with the long tongue. Oh, look at him with the tongue out. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this is a cute prank, I think. Oh, he's so cute. Look at his feet. <laughs> I, the feet, they're kind of weird me out, the feet. They're tiny. They look like little raisins. <laughs> they're tiny. The one with the long tongue looks kind of deranged the more I stare at it. Uh, he's just <laughs> so cute. <laughs> I got to stop. Well, I'm going to stop you here. Hold on. All right. The more police department... Oh, informed okay. Fox 25 that it has made a arrest, an arrest, and it's been made aware of several adult toys being placed on buildings, businesses, and intersections. That's cute. All right. That's fun. They're just little. That doesn't look like an adult toy. It looks like a circle. They had to blur it out. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what toy do you think this was that got stuck up there? I think it was. I mean, that, that's a hell of a shot. Unless it just was placed on there. I think it's got a suction cup. That's what I think. It just landed skadunk <laughs> right on there. I don't. Crews had taken down yep. objects <laughs> down by mid afternoon. <laughs> Is that one? That looks yep. like a bird. <laughs> a bird with a backside, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> that looks like, that's his little feet. What if they put the googly eyes and a little tongue on a dildo? That'd be kind of cute. Right? <laughs> Anyhow. <laughs> The yeah. sex toys are being placed in high areas with drones. Drones? So that's how they're doing that's them. Amazing. Yeah, they're like. That's a waste of a in. drone. That's crazy. I think they should. I think Obama should hire this guy to go bomb some mosques in Yemen. I mean, this guy's got great aim. <laughs> He's not going to hit a wedding. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if he did, then he'd give them some dildos. <laughs> he, I mean, hey, that'd be a fun way to bomb Yemen. That's on the water tower. Oh. Look at that. They should allow that to stay up there. I'm sure that one's going to be up there I for a I don't understand minute. like why people aren't allowed to see that. Yeah, why blur it out? It's just a plastic dick. I don't understand why they blur it out either. You know, the, the fun thing, though, is there is a guy that has to go get all these. Like, that's a fun <laughs> job. Like, you ever see those jobs where they're like, this man makes $65,000 a year just for working one day, and it's him crawling up like a light tower to change like a bulb? Yes. I always thought those jobs were the coolest. Well, I agree. It's one day of work. Yeah, and, but he has to go up uh, an extreme height. Obviously, he has harnesses and stuff like that. In this case, these people, like, imagine a guy like that's just like a lineman or whatever for the county, like a, <laughs> like a Glenn Campbell song, crawling out over those lights and have to grab the penis and take it off the thing. That's... Wow. I would pay for that. Do you think they're used or hot? Can I see him again? <laughs> <laughs> That's him looking up at the stoplight. Like, Whoa, what's that? look like, at the dildo. All the way I love that I'm talking. It would be so cute. I honestly, I, I, I love him. <laughs> what voice do you think he has? He's just, hey, Natalie. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> look at the dildo up there. That's cool. <laughs> More. <laughs> hey, is that a dildo on that light? <laughs> the dildo on that water tower. It's crazy. I'm going to take him and make his mouth move over that audio. <laughs> <laughs> we'll send you the video for whenever you're sad. Well, look at his eyes just move. His eyes just shrunk. Oh, that's a big old dildo up there. <laughs> <laughs> He's like my little guy. <laughs> He's my friend. Hi, Natalie. You see the big dildo? <sighs> Officers are investigating the incident and will decide whether charges or municipal fines will be filed. The Moore Police Department does not condone these actions, and the fine or they'll fine the individual who did the prank. Aren't there better things that they could be doing? Is that the guy? No, I think that's just another. Uh, He's oh. the guy. He's like, I oh, just, that's child sex. Abuse. Yeah, they right. took my tiltos <laughs> and they sprinkled them about town. That's my favorite one on that water tower up there. Oh boy! Sorry. No, that's that's. Not. You think about it, it's almost kind of like a, a deranged Easter egg hunt. Where's the next dick gonna be? Well, let's get to another story. This one involves hazing. Now, were you ever in a hazing situation in school? 
you know, like Mean Girls or whatever. No, the closest thing I did was I was on. Uh, I was actually a. Uh, on the emergency medical squad in college. What the hell is that? I was the an, emergency I was an e, medical I was squad. an EMT. Oh, wow. Yeah. That's huge. Thank you. And they were hazing you? Well, that was the closest thing they did. Yeah, they the, to join the thing, you had to sit in a dark room okay. with the whole like squad around you. And there was a bright light on your face. Wow. And they all sat around you. And then they all asked you like pretty om- like, ominous personal questions about yourself from different areas of the room. And then you had to answer them. But that was the closest. To become an EMT, folks. You hear this? <laughs> for, for a college. For oh, a college. But yeah. Still, that seems crazy and intense. Yeah. But that was that was the closest thing. It was weird. So like, have you ever had a lesbian experience to <laughs> yeah. be an EMT? <laughs> also... How many BPs does the heart go? I don't know. <laughs> they they asked no medical questions. It was more like, why do you care about life saving? Oh, it's like stuff like that where they're like, you had to be in their cults. Like, yeah. we're gonna like put you in a potato sack and then hit you with like, uh, yeah, coins inside of a sock or something. They're like, so why do you think you could be a part of us? Interesting. <laughs> it's like skull and bones. Well, do you know they do that in uh, other? I guess, I mean, that, that makes sense because this is a story about like a sort of a hazing to get into a pretty, I guess I would say like a coveted job, you know, a renowned Michelin starred chef has resigned from his oh. position at a prestigious Southwest France hotel oh. following reports of an alleged hazing incident that prompted a public prosecutor investigation into sexual assault and violence. Oh, I think it gets a God. little more... Uh, than hazing when it involves sexual Did assault. Did escalate but, quickly there. Yes, exactly. Uh, I don't know how to say this person's name, but I'm going to give it an attempt here in French. Aurelien Lagu. Is that good, Kirsten? You speak French? Uh, I, I don't, but I hear it. Sounds good to me. <laughs> <I> <laughs> that sounded French right. At the very least. Uh, no. <laughs> you got the first name. I did? Yeah, yeah. It's Do Aurelian. you speak French? No, but it, it's Aurelien. Aurelien Lagu. <laughs> Who joined the Hotel de Paris? Oh, what are you doing? You're highlighting it right in front of me. This is so. High you would be stuff. really good in Ratatouille. <laughs> I think I would. You would fit right under his Ratatouille. Hat. I'd be like, hey, there's look at that. No, he doesn't. He <laughs> does, he talk like, does he sound like that? I don't even know I what could Ratatouille. See is. you pulling the hair. Oh, is it a puppet show? <laughs> you haven't seen it. No. Oh my lord, this you're flying today, right? This guy yeah. right here, Remy. Look the dildos. <laughs> Is that what he sounds like? Yeah. Oh, look at that. Patton Oswalt does the voice. Oh, my God. You know who else is in it? Janine Garofalo. Oh, that's cool. I love her. Me too. Anywho, this fat, this, uh, the this stars, French. Star said, look at him. What? Look at that. Look at Zoom. Oh, look at that face. He <laughs> I, just, lo- he's, okay. I love that Natalie could just get completely like engulfed in a cute <laughs> eyeball, like googly he lo- eye. He loves to cook. <laughs> he he's like, I just cook. can't love. He just got to put some parsley and he just loves to little, he loves to cook. He just, I love, I'm a chef. He's a chef. He's a, he's a mouse chef. That's, I didn't know that was about. You got to watch it on the plane. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> 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 he loves to cook. He's like, that baby turns into chili meat. <laughs> Is that part of the movie? You, you could be the ratatouille of Wendy's. Yes, that's really right. Could. Well, this Ratatouille fella, this young chef, was reportedly tied naked to a chair. No! With an apple in his mouth. By a rat? Maybe. (laughs) Maybe. Remy, no. Remy, no. Leave the man alone. He was tied to a chair with an apple in his mouth? Why do you want to be a chef? (laughs) You've ratted your last Tui. This He's is... got an apple in his mouth and a carrot inserted in a demeaning manner. Oh, That's where what it was says. the carrot in his ass? That's it says a demeaning manner, I <laughs> Not think. In his mouth. This That's is the apple is right. This is crazy. This is should have opened with this one. I mean, this is wild. He is like a like a like a pig being roasted. Yeah, I don't and he's think... only uh, <laughs> I don't think it was in his nose. Can I don't you think the pull carrot up was in his a nose. picture of a pig being roasted just so I can get a better image? <laughs> Make sure it has cute googly eyes, too. It does. It does. No worries, it does. <laughs> and so there's a carrot in the anus? That's awful. All it says is a demeaning manner. It could be in his ear. We don't know. <laughs> I don't think 
Cookie carrots in the evening. Footage of the event circulated on, circulated on social media. Can oh you find my footage? god! And it wasn't taken down. Oh, it must no. have been on X. Oh no! It says it's since been removed, and police are actively <gasps> seeking to retrieve it. So if you find it, Kirsten, please send it to the police. <laughs> okay, this okay, is well. not right. The report claimed that Mr. Largu, the they head chef, they must have chef, hated this guy. He was among. He was present he during was a the monster. incident. So he denied the wrongdoing. He labeled the report as false and defamatory, and he says, "I would like to formally deny the allegations against me." But he probably said it like French, you know, like, "I would like to formally deny <laughs> the allegations made against me." Uh, the facts reported in no way reflect reality he said he condemns any form of mistreatment hazing humiliation and asserting himself would be something about that behavior i want to see what else they did he was assaulted with a carrot yes let me ask you a question okay yes please now who i'm a little confused who was the man that was assaulted was he a new employee yes it was a person who was like attempting to become a chef there and so they said if you want to be a chef we're gonna tie you to a chair i mean this is like crazy you ever watch that was it the bear yeah, I they don't w- do that. I only watched one of them, and uh, it, was, it was stressful. I watched all of it. So I feel like you got to like be like, yes, chef, no, chef. And that gets kind of sexual. Now they see this guy. You can't say yes, name? chef, with an apple in your mouth. <laughs> you can kind of. Or but like, it up your ass. No, but like you can. I feel like this is like to break them in. You know what I mean? So that they're like a little more. Yeah, chef, no, chef. You know, I don't know. Naked? It all seems <laughs> sexual to me anyways, right? They Let's all see fuck. if the guy was hot. They all fuck. They do coke. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Google uh, the person. What was the the well, victim's name? It doesn't I don't know say. if it's on here. That is fucked up. That is crazy. A carrot in your ass. Can you believe it? Imagine if it was like, you know, to perform at the store tonight, you've got to be tied to the stage naked with a carrot in your ass. You know, I'd do it. <laughs> That's the thing about like, you know, how much you want to be a fucking chef. <laughs> Think about it that way. I mean, I would be like, isn't it fucked? Th- sometimes you go like, it's fucked up that I had to do that to get this job or whatever. But then you go like, but I want it. So would you just you, put up with it. Would you put a carrot in your butt for anything in, in uh, entertainment? Uh, for fun, maybe. No, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> How big's the carrot? Is if it's it a, a baby, it's a baby carrot? carrot. Or- <laughs> yeah, it's really Bill, different. Bills go straight to the Super Bowl if you put a carrot yeah. in your ass. Hell yeah. <laughs> Let's go. I mean, I'm not precious about my ass. <laughs> People can be very protective of their butts. Yeah, because they're gay secretly. They're all like, my, they're like, ew, I'm not putting shit in my butt because I'm not gay. And it's like, you're extra gay, dude. <laughs> Let a girl put a finger in there and see how where you stand after that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, as long as there's no sharp nails, you're fine. Yeah, and even if there are sharp nails, so what? Stop being a bitch. It's a little, it's tough with the sharp nails. <laughs> <laughs> Grin and bear it. Oh my Lord. I can't even believe this. It's crazy. So it doesn't Can really go this? anywhere other than. Uh, yeah. I, I don't want to interrupt, but I, I'm going to need to see the cinnamon toast. <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, he's got an apple in his mouth. <laughs> Where's the carrot? Hidden? Whoa, what's he doing with that carrot, Natalie? You <laughs> <laughs> can see a carrot in his, in his mouth. <laughs> yeah, that'd be cute. Like, this is nice. Hey, don't put that carrot in my butt. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I love him. I, I honestly want to get cinnamon toast after this. You got to get a, to- a tattoo of that guy on you. It's just going to be a square. Oh, yeah. With his little eyes and his mouth. Though. I honestly, I love him. Whoa, a carrot all the way up there. <laughs> <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> They didn't, and they didn't even say baby carrot, so you just know. But in France, you so just yeah, know. Real. Baby, a baby carrot. Yeah, it's a regular carrot. I'm afraid it's a long. It may, hopefully, it's, it's straight. Right. Hopefully, it's like you know, meaning like it's a uh, from A to B. It's not one of these wonky, crooked carrots because that could not get right. <laughs> that could get crazy. Well, we didn't have many sports today because I feel like I. Sports. Yeah, I talked about sports a lot last week, and we talk about sports on this program. But I do have to do something by obligation to fill the, the sports segment. All so right. we do have a video that I want to share with you. And you might have heard oh, it I earlier I think I saw before. that. Yeah. Beep, 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 beep. Sports time. Beep, is that you? Beep, 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 sure is. Sound like the cinnamon toast guy. Whoa, it's the sports. 
So I don't know. This one just <laughs> sounded like uh, someone. I forget who sent this in uh, to me. Did I give credit someplace? I don't even remember. Uh, I don't think so. I forget who sent this, but it's a great video. And I wanted to. This is a good way to end the program today. I feel like we'll just give this a, a whirl here. Let's watch it. See what conjures in Natalie's mind. She's going to want to look at the Cinnamon Toast Crunch again. Oh my god! I love this. So every pause it every uh, umpire, you know, when they have like you know strike one, strike two, and then you're out. They have their own kind of like signature call. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like when there's a strike, they go here. That's a yeah. good one. I like that. Or they can just go strike, or you know, you can make up your own. This yeah. guy decides to sound like he's coming when he's doing it. <laughs> Let's hear it again. To the point where strike three, it's he's really blowing the load. Like he's got a ah. carrot in his ass. Ah. Ah. <laughs> Does he have a mic on? Yeah, that he's mic'd up here, clearly. <laughs> but yeah, that that lat that strike three was just like ah. It's like a drone dropped a dildo up there. <laughs> Makes me want to compile some footage and you could play a ump or cum. Ooh, that's a fun game, Kirsten. Write it down, please. <laughs> Ump or cum. Ump or cum. Was that a strike two or a man relieving his jizz? <laughs> oh, boy. Ump or cum. That's the... <laughs> I can't wait for the game. <sighs> we'll let you look at the Cinnamon Toast Crunch while look you do your plugs. Face. Whoa. Am I plugging things right now? You sure can, while the cinnamon toast crunch is up. All right. I, my name is Natalie. And Whoa, her name is Natalie. You could find me on Instagram at Natalie Cuomo underscore. Uh, you can find me everywhere else at Natalie Cuomo. Check out my podcast, Help Natalie Cuomo. And uh, thank you so much for having me, Josh. Whoa, it's Natalie Cuomo. I love That's what him. he's saying. <laughs> I really love him. Try to get voice work out there. Remember last week we I, I auditioned for Pizza Hut. Today I auditioned for the animated Cinnamon Toast Crunch uh, movie. They should do one. You know what I'll say? What's that? I feel like I know him, but I don't know if he knows me. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, we've given it. We've given her a existential crisis, folks. <laughs> But you can come check me out. I'll be in Vegas, February 2nd and 3rd. Wise Guys going to be on May 30th down in the springtime. We got a bunch of stuff already on sale. May 30th, DC Improv. April 22nd or something like that. I'm going to be in Alabama. All these things are going to about to go on sale. So get over to Instagram, Instagram.com uh, slash Josh underscore Potter. I mean, Josh underscore Potter on the uh, old Instagram. J underscore Potter on Twitter. And oh boy, we'll be back next week. So good to see you. I love you. It's a big dildo. Make sure you like, rate, review, subscribe, hit the like button and all that on the YouTube. And if you're on iTunes or whatever, make sure you leave a review and subscribe, unsubscribe, resubscribe, all that kind of stuff. Oh, there's an angry one. I don't want to end No. No, no. Get him out of here. Get that guy. Yeah. yeah. He's the best. All right, folks. We'll see you next week. We love you very much. Thank you to Kirsten. Thank you to Alex. Thank you to Bobby. And thank you to our guest, Natalie Cuomo, once again. We'll see you next time on The Josh Potter Show. Thank you. <laughs>